the committee is called to order again, and I will uh, put folks on notice. It seems we're going to have a vote uh, in about an hour, and so I think we have an opportunity to complete this in an hour. Um, it may be contradiction terms to say that at the same time to call on Mr. Robacher, uh, but the next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by Mr. Robacher from, tech, uh, from California. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 045, amendment to H.R. 5781 offered by Mr. Roy Bacher of California. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading without objection. So ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain uh, his amendment. Uh, this amendment requires NASA to provide uh, reports to Congress on the current in the current areas. Uh, uh, that is the current laws prohibiting cooperation with the People's Republic of China. We need a report on exactly what those laws are, what the restrictions are. Uh, we need a report uh, from NASA on the level of transparency required by a nation in order to join the ISS coalition. Uh, we need to see that uh, in black and white, what would be required of any nation, and this is, of course is aimed at China. Uh, uh, if they don't have a certain level of transparency, we, we need to know whether or not that will mean they can still become a member of, uh, of the team and, and participate in the International Space Station. Uh, number three, uh, we need a report from NASA on the military uses of the Chinese space program. The China supposedly has a uh, civilian space program, but uh, like all things, uh, you look very closely in China, you'll find so much of it tied to the People's Liberation Army. And uh, we'd like to see uh, what uh, military uses are being put uh, to play by the Chinese in their space program. And uh, last, we need a report on the danger that is posed to the International Space Station by a, uh, a mission that the Chinese flew, uh, and, and what they did is they launched a very um, a micro satellite uh, uh, near the International Space Station. It was on the path of the International Space Station. And we've never had an explanation of why this uh, little satellite was launched, and uh, uh, we need to get a full report on that particular incident. And uh, uh, so far, there has been no investigation. And uh, I think that we need explanations of, of what that was all about and did that and has that put the space station in jeopardy. And as the space station goes around uh, in its orbit, uh, this uh, Chinese uh, uh, little miniature satellite could well uh, be a threat to the safety of the station. Uh, we need to know whether that's the case or not. And I think it's uh, fairly non-controversial. It's just uh, asking for reports on those areas, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if the gentleman would yield, um, and I'm not trying to be catty or anything here, um, you, you later you have an amendment that says there can be no contact with with China. So I mean, how do we how do we sort of you know how do we make those two fit together? You mean how we can investigate without actually having a, a uh, uh, relationship with them. Uh, it says you can't even talk to them. Well, we're, we're basically uh, not talking to them. We're uh, asking them questions. <laughs> yeah, and if the other one is passed, by the way, if the other uh, amendment is passed, I will gladly withdraw uh, this amendment. Uh, well, if, if, again, if the gentleman, well, I'll just I'll claim my own time. I, I think this investigation is something that would better be left to CIA or some other agency. I, I'm not sure that that NASA has this ability, um, and so for that reason, and again, and, and I am, you, maybe you can cure it later by saying you can talk to them, but this just doesn't seem to um, uh, to be the right business for NASA. So, is there further discussion? If there's no further discussion, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Hall is recognized. If Rohrbacher talked to them enough, they may have a different opinion of us over <laughs> here. <laughs> I support his amendment. Uh, it simply asked for a report. Why not? Well, why not would be because it would take uh, resources. Oh, resources from NASA that that could be used for a number. Uh, 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 you know a number of other areas, as well as, uh, it just doesn't seem like NASA. This is like, you know, asking um, the National uh, Department or, or the Department of Defense to look into something with, um, you know, hogs and 
in, in, in Texas. I just don't think it's the right, uh, right location. Is there further discussion on this amendment? Chairman? Uh, Mr. McCall is recognized. Thank you. I, I, I yield to the gentleman from California. Okay. Uh, well, let me just note that there is a lot of, uh, uh, how do you say, a, lo a lot of movement going on now about furthering our cooperation with China. Uh, a lot of it, the space cooperation. People are talking about bringing them into a space relationship, perhaps like we are with, uh, with Russia. And uh, uh, let me just note for everyone here, there has been no reform in China as we've seen in Russia. You know, the churches are filled in Russia. There's opposition uh, parties and newspapers. Now, obviously, they have not reached the, the level that we'd like. But in China, they've actually retrogressed, and they are an incredibly repressive society. And I don't like to see the idea that we can uh, just nonchalantly sort of ease into a, 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 a uh, high-tech, uh, 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 space-related partnership with the Chinese. And uh, this report by NASA, who knows this, uh, 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 you know, the people on, on, in NASA, you know, know what issues are involved here in, and how they would want to cooperate. Uh, it seems to me that that uh, makes all the sense in the world for us to have an understanding on these particular issues about the level of transparency that we would require of the uh, member of any member of the uh, coalition running the International Space Station. Uh, why is that not a report that we could uh, expect? And what is it about the laws that uh, they're currently in place that prohibit certain cooperation with with uh, communist China? Uh, NASA would know that. Their legal counsel would know that. And what are the military uses of the Chinese space program? There's no reason why NASA cannot uh, ask our Defense Department uh, and the CIA and others uh, to help them prepare that report. And uh, of course, the danger to the space station by that Chinese probe, uh, that is something that uh, NASA would actually be the lead uh, agency in. So I think this is an important issue because we're easing into what, would, what I consider to be a very unhealthy relationship we're the world's worst human rights abuser. Thank you, uh, Mr. Robacher and, and Mr. Uh, McCall. It, uh, is, uh, if there's no further um, discussion, then all in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Opposed, aye. no, no, no. One, two, it looks like the, the no's have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Thank you very Are much. You, as, uh, are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes. Thank you, Mr. The Chair. clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 125, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Ms. Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentlelady for five minutes to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry I got so shook up over Mr. Wu trying to take stuff out of Texas. Uh, I, I do have an amendment at the desk, and I want to thank you and the ranking member for considering it. This amendment is pretty straightforward, a uh, sensible amendment which clarifies Section 405 of the bill. We need to ensure that NASA has a clear plan in place to put NASA-owned aeronautical structure, infrastructure back on track to fill the U.S. and long-term aeronautics research needs in order to ensure that NASA develops a plan to stabilize and reverse the deterioration of NASA's aeronautics ground test facilities. My amendment specifies that this report be completed within one year after the enactment of this act. NASA's aeronautics test program ensures the capability, availability, and accessibility of testing facilities to meet the U.S. aeronautics needs for NASA, other government agencies, and commercial customers. These facilities provide vital testing and demonstrate new technologies, materials, structures, and flight concepts, bringing understanding to the aeronautical behavior. Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, I appreciate your considering this amendment, and I encourage my colleagues to support it, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Ms. Johnson, for that excellent uh, amendment. Is there further discussion? If there's no further discussion, then the vote occurs on the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor, no. Or opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Thank you. Let's see. I think Mrs. Uh, Fudge might be, she, okay. 
Well, she has been pretty um, attending all today, so we will we'll see if she's going to be coming back. Um, and Mr. Wilson. So the next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentleman. Okay. Well, he may not have, we may just go back and pick it up afterwards. Uh, offered by the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Wilson, are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 036, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. Wilson of Ohio. Mr. Chairman, one of the things that I'm most pleased about with this mark is, is the inclusion if, of Excuse me, if the gentleman will uh, suspend, which amendment did you? 036. 036? Okay, Mr. Wilson's. Okay, excuse me. We okay? I, I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading without objection. So ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. One of the things that I'm most pleased about this mark is the inclusion of adequate funding for evidence-based programs to improve STEM education in our country. If America is to remain the world's leader in the space and aeronautics industry, we need a brilliant workforce of scientists and engineers at NASA. I represent a rural part of Ohio. Not many people know that former astronaut and Senator John Glenn grew up in a rural part of Appalachia, just west of my district in Ohio. I know that many of my constituents have been inspired by Senator Glenn's many accomplishments, as well as while watching various NASA rocket or shuttle launches on TV. Sadly, too many of our rural students are struggling to receive the adequate STEM education they need to become a NASA astronaut or engineer. And too many of our teachers lack the resources needed to provide the STEM education necessary for students to look to enter NASA, the NASA workforce. My amendment asks that NASA also consider students in rural schools as they look to increase awareness in NASA and improve STEM education at all levels of schooling. I urge my colleagues to support my amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Um, Wilson. Uh, as a son of two farmers uh, and someone who represents a large rural area also, uh, I think this is an excellent uh, uh, amendment. And uh, I think that maybe the, the, the gentleman from the smallest county in Texas might have something to say about that also. I agree with the chairman. Yield back. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The, uh, the amendment is agreed to. Uh, with, if there's no objection, Ms. Fudge was the amendment before, and so uh, uh, we will bring her up again at this time. And so um, will the clerk report the amendment? Amendment number 071, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Ms. Fudge of Ohio and Mr. Wilson of Ohio. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentlelady for five minutes to explain her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this amendment is very simple. It will ensure that we perform not only research and development for the technologies of the current mission, but also the research, development, and demonstration of the technologies needed for future missions. It will be quite a while before we put a human on Mars, but if we don't start now, the technology, R, D, and D, that will get us there, it may never happen. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Ms. Fudge. Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm inclined to support the General Ladies Amendment. It establishes an enabling technologies development and demonstration program under the Space Technology Program. And it's unclear to me what the program contributes to the overall Space Technology Program, but I'm told it'll add technologies that are needed to support the exploration program. Would the General Lady help me understand just a little what she expects this program will accomplish and how it helps our overall exploration effort? For the record. For the record, Mr. Uh, ranking Member, it is exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> That's what? Exactly what you said. <laughs> In that case, I'll yield back my time. <laughs> if there's no further discussion, um, since Ms. Fudge has educated Mr. Hall, then we will ask for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. 
The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The next amendment uh, is um, offered by the gentleman from New Mexico, Mr. Lujan. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 064, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. Lujan of New Mexico. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading without objection. So ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now more than ever, we must invest in educating the next generation of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and innovators. The continuing underrepresentation of Latinos and other minority students in mathematics, engineering, and science fields will only contribute to the shortage of professionals available to work in these important industries. My amendment amends the STEM education and training section of the bill to ensure that participants in NASA STEM education programs include minority and underrepresented groups, including students from high needs local school districts. We must make sure that NASA is participating in active outreach to these communities of students who for too long have suffered from a STEM achievement gap. My amendment also allows for a special consideration to be given to minority serving institutions when NASA is establishing or expanding degree programs in, earth, in space and earth sciences, aeronautics, engineering, and other STEM disciplines. My amendment will support the creation of leaders and innovators within our minority and underrepresented communities who will be prepared to carry out NASA's mission for many years to come. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment, and I thank you very much for your consideration. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back my time. Is there further discussion on the amendment? Uh, 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 Governor Giramondi. Uh, just a quick question. The, um, I think the present language is both for um, all, kind, all levels of education. If Mr. Chairman, if the gentleman would yield. Uh, well, let me just finish my question. If that is the case, then typically minority serving institutions are the higher level of education or the highest level. And if that's a modification to only go to highest level, then I think we may not want to do that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the gentleman yield. Sure, yield. Um, well, if you look, Mr. Uh, Garamundi, at uh, page 77 of the bill, there's within the section here we're targeting minority-serving institutions for higher education, but the subsequent amendment and the language that goes on to follow is outreach to students from underrepresented groups, as well to make sure that we're going out and we're recruiting over and beyond. The enabling legislation around the education section is reaching out to education of all levels, and I think it was purposely written that way taking into consideration that NASA does have programs K through 12 and post-secondary education. And this would only emphasize that we need to make sure that, again, as we're looking at some of the, the programs that do exist, that we're paying attention to all parts of the country. Um, there's background coming from the National Science Board, science and engineering indicators from uh, NSF and from others that have compiled reports showing where degree programs, STEM bachelor's degrees earned by minority students is 17% much lower than representation from other minorities in the country. So it's I'm not debating that urgent. point. I just want to uh, thank you for yielding back. I'm not debating that point. I agree entirely with it. I just want to make sure that we're not in this language inadvertently directing the money only to higher education. But apparently that's not the case. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hall is recognized. I have concerns about the amendment, uh, and my disagreement or concerns don't stem from the intent to reach out to minority students. Rather, this amendment makes several wholesale revisions to statutory references contained in the bill. But my main question is, when we first looked at, at the uh, bill, it had a general definition of institution of higher education. And it goes one through five in, the, in that additional uh, 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 purposes. That's stricken from the bill. I, I was just wondering why. The gentleman would yield? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ranking Member Hall, that was actually a recommendation from uh, Legislative Council. Um, that's something that could be added back. I asked that very question when we were giving the suggestion looking at this provision, and I'd be happy and I'd be very supportive to ask unanimous consent that the language uh, that was stricken, which reads in parentheses, as defined under Section 101A of the Higher Education Act of 1965, parenthetical 20 U.S.C. 1001, parenthetical A, and then close triple time parenthetical uh, be added back, Mr. Chairman. Well, first, let me say that um, that we've, in a number of hearings during the competes uh, reauthorization, it became very clear that uh, minorities, uh, women uh, uh, underserved, were our best areas to bump up 
uh, in those uh, in those areas. And so that's what we're attempting to do. If there is some, um, so I support the gentleman's amendment. If there is some improvements that could be made uh, between now and the floor or in conference, then we need to continue to, to work on that. So if there's no further discussion, all in favor say. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Hall. I'd like to make another inquiry. If he's willing to put that uh, A through uh, 1001A, the general definition of institutions of higher education back in, those five definitions there, it would be a lot easier for us to support it. Or if he would consider that from here until the time it goes either in report language or otherwise. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to work with the ranking member and yourself to make sure that we're able to get language that was suggested by legislative council and see what's most appropriate to get back in. I know there was a lot, great deal of, of effort that has been put into this, and uh, if, there, if there's more effort that needs to be put into it, then, then we need to do that. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentlelady from Texas. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The clerk will report the amendment. Yes. Amendment number 126, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Ms. Eddie Bernice Johnson of Texas. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentlelady for five minutes to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and ranking member, for considering this amendment. As you are aware, Section 601 of this bill focuses on improving STEM education and training at NASA. This section also instructs NASA, the NASA administrator to consult with the Secretary of Education and the Director of the National Science Foundation to improve STEM education and training. My amendment ensures the gross underrepresentation of minority teachers in the United States classrooms as part of this discussion. The best way to improve elementary, secondary, and undergraduate and graduate level STEM education in our country is by addressing the absence of minority teachers who are well qualified. The achievement gap for minorities is staggering, but I am convinced it can be mitigated through the interaction of minority role models and minority youth with minority youth. If children see someone who looks like them succeeding and encouraging them to achieve, then the prospects for those children to believe in themselves and fulfill their own potential are far greater. Uh, put simply, believing uh, is seeing. The best way we can strengthen our nation's scientific enterprise is to strengthen diversity so all Americans can compete in the 21st century. According to the Secretary of Education, 200,000 new teachers are hired each year nationally and less than 2% or 4,500 are black males. This is unacceptable. To quote Secretary Duncan, our graduation rate, graduation rates have gone up dramatically and our dropout rates have, have, gone to, have to go down. But to get there, I'm convinced we have to have more people of color teaching, being role models and mentors. In my state of Texas, well over half of the student population is minority but nearly 77% of the Texas teaching force is non-minority. The same diversity found among students is not found among teachers. The shortage of minority teachers is a serious problem. Uh, this is a serious problem, because my, but my amendment to the section of this bill which tasks the NASA administrator to consult with other agencies a good place to start. Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member, I appreciate your considering this amendment to ensure this discussion does not end here today, and I encourage my colleagues to support this amendment and yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Once again, I think uh, all you said was very well documented in our hearings uh, on the American Competes Act. Uh, is there further discussion? If no, all, of, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is agreed to. And let me see, Mrs. Edwards is next, and she put us on notice earlier that she, oh, are you, are you going to do it? Okay. <laughs> uh, she will be back. She had a press conference. Uh, she's been very attentive today. Uh, so I understand that Ms. Fudge will offer that for her. So the next amendment on the roster is an amendment 
by the gentlelady from uh, Maryland, who is, will be offered by the gentlelady from Ohio. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. There's an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 064, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Ms. Edwards of Maryland. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with reading without objection. So ordered. I recognize the gentlelady for five minutes to explain her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ms. Edwards' amendment adds a new section to Title VI of the bill, establishing a pilot program for hands-on space science and engineering education and training related to aeronautics, exploration, science, space operations, and human spaceflight that serve to stimulate and engage students in science engineering, and that foster skills including engineering, teamwork, project management, and problem solving. The emphasis of the pilot program will be on technology-related education and training. The whole point of this language and this pilot program is to get our young scientists engaged and active. The pilot program will have an emphasis on underserved and underrepresented minority populations because we are losing our minority, our, our minority populations when it comes to math and science, and we have to aggressively make sure that we capture them and make sure they are included. I understand that there is an issue with the appropriations language in this amendment. I am fine with changing this language to such sums from within the funding authorized for NASA's education program. I encourage everyone to support this important amendment that will benefit our young folks by engaging them in science and technology and making our future stronger. Mr. Chairman, I urge support and yield back. Thank you, um, uh, Ms. Fudge. You did an excellent job as a stand-in for, for Mrs. Edwards. And once again, this is, this is a, a very good amendment, as we would expect from her. Is there further discussion? If not, all the vote occurs on the amendment. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered um, in person by the gentlelady from Ohio, Ms. Fudge. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Oh, excuse me. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 072, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Ms. Fudge of Ohio and Mr. Wilson of Ohio. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with reading. Without objection, so ordered. The gentlelady has five minutes to explain her amendment. Thank you very much. Uh, th this amendment adds a provision to the institutional management section that will ensure that our unique and state-of-the-art facilities receive proper consideration for modifications. In addition to maintenance, repair, upgrading, and modernization, the administrator will include an assessment of what structural modifications must be made to maximize the usage of our strongest assets and significant financial investments. I urge, uh, I urge passage. Thank you very much. I, re I yield back. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Fudge, for improving this bill. Is there further discussion? If no, the amendment occurs on the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentleman from California, Mr. Robacher. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? I am. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 048, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. Roy Bacher of California. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. This amendment reaffirms policy. Uh, that already exist basically with respect to near-Earth objects as a threat uh, to our nation and, yes, to all of humanity. Uh, it restates the, dire uh, the, the direction that we've given the administration uh, to recommend a federal agency or agencies to be responsible uh, for um, designating those agencies by October 15th and those agencies that would be designated yeah, yeah, yeah. with the responsibility of, of how to cope with a uh, well, near-Earth object that is uh, uh, that might be observed and, and uh, then would be charted and would uh, perhaps be colliding with the Earth. And uh, then also the administration needs to designate uh, uh, what would be done and who would be uh, uh, responsible for the campaign and the efforts to deflect any major near-Earth object that was seen and, and observed heading towards the Earth. This is not a, uh, this is actually reaffirming policy that already exists, and uh, um, I think that it was very responsible, and we're just asking, the, making sure the administration, that we reaffirm that October 15th deadline. 
Thank you, Mr. Robacher. You have been a champion uh, in this area. Uh, oh, Mr. Um, uh, Barley is recognized. There's an old adage that says what's everybody's business is nobody's business, and somebody has to have responsibility for this. It was a near-Earth object that became a really near-Earth object that spelled the end of the dinosaurs. Then you could do nothing about it. Today we might be able to do something about it. It is very obvious with the capabilities we have today that we, somebody ought to be watching out there to see what's out there and to avoid a catastrophe if it's possible. So I support the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bartlett. If there's no further discussion on the amendment, all in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, the, the, the amendment is agreed to. And um, the next amendment on the roster is also from the gentleman from California. Mr. Robacher, are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Uh, yes, I am. I have an amendment at the desk. Mr. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 049, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. Roy Bacher of California. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. Okay. Uh, this amendment, uh, of course, is tied to the amendment that we just passed. And it reaffirms the policy in respect to the role of the Arecibo telescope uh, and the part that it plays uh, in the identification of uh, threats of near-Earth objects. Let's just note that um, with a, without the Arecibo telescope, uh, we will not be able to track uh, uh, a distant object that is headed toward the Earth and chart its course in time for us to have uh, a response. So the Arecibo telescope is uh, uh, essential if we are serious about the idea that uh, if an the Earth object is, uh, is observed and uh, uh, we would be, then be able to chart its course to see if it actually was a threat. So again, this is reaffirming policy that exists. Thank you, Mr. Robacher. Uh, another good amendment. Is there further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. And the next amendment on the roster is offered by the gentleman from California, Mr. Robacher. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Yes, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 044, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. Roy Bacher of California. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. OK. Uh, this is an issue that I am uh, very serious about, and it's one we all need to consider very seriously because it goes to uh, the heart of the world that we're going to create I think I will. Uh, in the future. I happen to believe there are major threats to our national security and to the future of the world. One is on, our, one is on us right now, it's radical Islam, uh, but the other is uh, very close by and that is uh, within a few years we will see the emergence of an incredibly powerful China that has had no, and I say zero, political reform. Uh, we were told uh, over the years that if we just engage China and are more active with them in various uh, uh, ways economically and exchange programs and uh, things like space programs and such, that they would uh, evolve into a more democratic country because of the contact that they had with the West. Uh, this has been proven to be a horrendous mistake. Uh, this theory of getting close to a, uh, an evil force and that's going to make it, uh, some of your goodness is going to rub off, has not worked out. I call that the hug a Nazi, make a liberal theory. And it has not worked. Uh, the bottom line is what we've got now is we've had these exchanges with China and it has led to nothing but a stronger, more aggressive, more threatening, and yes, at home, more totalitarian uh, government uh, that threatens the rest of us as well as its own people. Let us note that uh, of believers in God who are being thrown into jail today, uh, most of them, the majority of them are, are in China. China is the world's worst human rights abuser, throwing Falun Gong members, people who, ref who refuse to uh, uh, to file and, and to uh, uh, register with the government as a, as a church under their direction are persecuted in that country still. No opposition parties, no freedom of speech, no unions, etc. Well, the last time we decided to cooperate with China in terms of uh, uh, lifting, uh, letting them lift, for example, our satellites on Chinese rockets, 
uh, there was an incredible transfer of technology that has done nothing but weaken us and strengthen this horrible dictatorship. So this amendment prohibits any exchange or contact between NASA uh, programs or personnel, including contractors, with uh, the People's Republic of China or any entity that is headquartered in the People's Republic of China. As I say, China continues to be aggressive in their stance on space issues. And they've already laid down their marker. They have, they, as I mentioned earlier, they launched a, uh, uh, some sort of a probe near the International Space Station, which actually uh, threatens the safety of that station. And we've never had any explanation of it. Well, we shouldn't be cooperating with a country that has such belligerent uh, uh, you know, uh, and provocative actions as that. Uh, and they recently shot down another satellite spreading debris uh, over an already dangerous environment. One of the things I'd like to see is cooperation on an international scale on debris. But are we going to let the worst uh, offender of all become part of that partnership? I don't think so. So there are no existing treaties or trade agreements between the United States and China that would be affected by this amendment. Uh, NASA has one agreement with the Chinese Academy of Sciences involving uh, geodynamics, uh, uh, some sort of uh, research that's going on there. And NASA and China have had several unofficial information exchanges, uh, particularly on lunar, lunar data. But I would, this amendment would basically prohibit us and prohibiting NASA from expanding uh, a relationship with this vicious dictatorship. I think that uh, uh, it will do nothing but, uh, and every time we've had this, as I say, it's resulted in a transfer of knowledge not from them to us, but from us to them in a way that strengthened uh, the, the government of, of, uh, that, that is repulsive to the values that we hold dear as Americans. So I would ask, uh, I know this is uh, rather uh, controversial or whatever, but I would ask my colleagues to join me in making this declaration that we are not going to enter, enter a partnership with uh, the communist Chinese, at least until we see some uh, reform on their end, and then we can rescind this uh, uh, restriction on NASA. I yield back my time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Robacher. Um, Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman. For your consistency. Um, I, I think the amendment goes more than, than says that we can't enter into an agreement. It says that we can't even discuss uh, agreements with him. I, I remember, um, or anything else, I remember former Secretary of State Jim Baker on one occasion was asked about not having any kind of discussion with a particular country. And his response was, we should not be afraid to talk with anyone. Uh, if we're concerned about their debris, we've got to talk to them about, you know, about that. So I, I think that, that you have some legitimate concerns, but I'm afraid that this amendment goes too far. Is there Mr. Further? Chairman? L L L Mr. Uh, Dr. Bartlett. Mr. I would like to inquire of staff, if we pass this amendment, would it trigger a sequential referral to international relations? Uh, uh, council um, would answer the question, please. I don't believe so, no. Thank you. So that's a definitive maybe? <laughs> okay. <laughs> or maybe not, I guess. It was more like that. <laughs> Is there further discussion? Dr. Barlett, did you have anything else you or? Uh, I was just concerned that uh, talking to other countries is really the, um, uh, that whether you do or don't generally resides in International Relations Committee, not in other committees. And I was just concerned that if we passed this, would it trigger a sequential referral? Would the gentleman, would the, would the gentleman yield? Be happy to yield. Uh, let's, your gentleman's making a very good point because when this is only restricting NASA from talking about specific programs of cooperation. We're not uh, talking about approaching them uh, the State Department has every right to approach them and to talk to them uh, as to whether or not they're willing to move forward. It just, uh, uh, and if so, if we want to open doors, that's the way to do it. The, uh, NASA's response, that's not our job to open doors like this. So we are actually just saying NASA shouldn't be leading the way to a new relationship with China. If there is that type of problem with communicating, it can be done by the State Department. Once again, as I read it, it says that 
adds a section of the bill prohibiting NASA personnel or contractors from any exchange or contact with the People's Republic or any identity who is uh, who is headquartered in the People's Republic of China. So that's, this is more than just entering into a contract. State, that's up to the Sorry. State Department. No, but I mean, but your amendment goes goes further. It just says that there can't be any contact. That's correct. Okay, I, well, I just want to be sure we knew. I would hope that we didn't do it with it. Herman Goring as well, you know. Uh, Mr. Wu is recognized. Well, um, I have deeply appreciated, I, I do deeply appreciate the gentleman's uh, strong, passionate, consistent uh, commitment to human rights, uh, regardless of location, regardless of the size of the entity uh, that the gentleman uh, is taking on. And I have, uh, I have uh, uh, worked with the gentleman on many of those human rights issues. Um, I, I part company with the gentleman on, on this particular amendment. Um, I think that there may be some limited opportunity uh, for uh, bringing the Chinese into a broader family of uh, spacefaring nations. But, you know, even short of uh, that potential future, uh, I think that uh, it's worth pointing out that we began our work uh, with the Russians when they were the Soviet Union. And as I recall, that process started in the early to mid-70s when the Russians and we had uh, thousands of nuclear weapons pointed at each other. And there was very, very limited technology transfer, per se. But we did, as I recall, have an Apollo-Soyuz uh, docking in space, and there was some controversy about that and, you know, whether it, it should have been done, but it led to several decades of, uh, uh, in my view, worthwhile space cooperation, and sometimes the international relationship has been testy, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and the Soviet Union was not an exemplar of respect for human rights, or uh, did we share uh, a lot of uh, foreign policy interests. I, I want to note also that I, I, well, let me finish this yeah. this this point, uh, which is that um, I was uh, I believe it was a foreign affairs hearing uh, where Secretary Gates, uh, I think at that time as uh, Defense Secretary for the Bush administration, uh, came in and, and testified that uh, to the uh, testified that uh, he favored. Uh, sharing some space activities uh, with the Chinese uh, substantially to enhance our security interests uh, because that uh, better understanding both their intention and their capabilities uh, was inherently in our interest and having some confidence building uh, so that uh, we could uh, put pressure on them to um, not uh, target satellites as uh, most countries have 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 done, uh, so that we don't put a bunch of particles, uh, debris in in, in uh, into Earth orbit. Uh, that you know that that's one thing to be avoided, and the confidence building, and the determination of capa uh, capability and intent in Secretary Gates's view was uh, was well worth. Uh, the, the risks of, uh, of uh, contact with the Chinese. And w with that, I, I'd be happy to yield to the gentleman for a moment. Yeah, well, for a few points, let's just note this, that uh, um, when we had that space cooperation with the Soviet Union, I was opposed to that then. And so, uh, and let me just note that that did not make the world safer. That, in fact, was... Uh, uh, coincided with a massive buildup of Soviet weaponry uh, in which they uh, put a huge number of new missiles in Europe. And uh, so that, that, while it made people feel good, it was just the opposite impact in terms of the potential that it had for peace on this planet. I'd and what eventually made brought the Soviet Union down. Re reclaiming my time, I'd like to ask the gentleman yes. if he thinks that those early efforts at space cooperation made any contribution to subsequent cooperation with respect to the International Space Station. Uh, in, in cooperation to the International Space Station, <coughs> let me think about that, because it's a specific question as to that end. And by the way, 
I have been supportive of the International Space Station s cooperation since the reform has taken place <laughs> in what was the Soviet Union, which is now a, a reforming and potentially democratic Russia. But what changed the Soviet Union, what brought down communist dictatorship, had nothing to do with the cooperation that, uh, that made people a feel good at the time. As my time is expiring, let me reclaim uh, that uh, I, I think that confidence building is very, very important, and, and that is certainly a worthy goal for our dis defense as well as for our space the establishment. The gentleman's time has expired. If there's no okay, further Soviet. discussion. Uh, would, you, would the gentleman give me, uh, indulge me with one more minute? Of course. I mean, uh, with unanimous consent. Okay, about this specific, because this is a, well, this is something I've lived on this. <clears throat> and uh, look, at a time when we were most cooperating with the Soviet Union and hoping that would have a beneficial effect, it had a negative effect. At that very time that we were cooperating uh, with these type of programs, they were pumping money into various countries of the world to, uh, to, to create revolution. They were dramatically expanding their military capabilities. That, that is what has happened with China as well, let me note. When we were cooperating with them in the space program, what has it, what was the result been? No, we've given them technology now that threatens the United States. What brought down the Soviet Union made it a more peaceful world? What brought us to the point where Ronald Reagan could uh, reach an agreement to dramatically reduce the, the nuclear weapons in our arsenals? And by the way, I'm in supportive of the current uh, efforts to reduce our nuclear arsenals. But what brought us to that point was when we supported those elements who were in opposition to the Soviet dictatorship, whether it was Afghanistan or Nicaragua or wherever, or, or, or Poland, that is what eventually brought about a more peaceful world. Not these, these very symbolic things, cooperation in the space. The gentleman's time has expired. Thank you very much. Is there further discussion on the amendment? If not, the vote occurs on the amendment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed say no, no. Uh, uh, the, the no's have it. The sorry, I'm not. sorry to have to call for a roll call vote. You want a roll call vote or show of hands? You want everybody to come back? I want back? a roll call vote. All right, sorry. we'll have a roll this call is vote. This going to mean a lot to people in their districts. Uh, the uh, clerk will record the vote. Chairman Gordon. No. Chairman Gordon votes no. Mr. Costello. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Johnson votes no. Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Wu. Mr. Wu votes no. Mr. Baird. Mr. Miller. We're outnumbered. <laughs> Mr. Miller votes no. Mr. Lipinski, Ms. Giffords, Ms. Giffords votes no. Ms. Edwards, Ms. Edwards votes no. Ms. Fudge, Ms. Fudge votes no. Mr. Lujan, Mr. Lujan votes no. Mr. Tonko. Mr. Tonko votes no. Mr. Rothman. Mr. Matheson. Oh, Mr. Matheson votes no. Mr. Davis. Mr. Chandler. Mr. Carnahan, Mr. Hill, Mr. Hill votes no. Mr. Mitchell, Mr. Mitchell votes no. Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson votes no. Mrs. Dahlkepper, Mrs. Dahlkepper votes no. Mr. Grayson, Mr. Grayson votes no. Mrs. Cosmas, Mrs. Cosmas votes no. Mr. Peters, Mr. Peters vote no. Mr. Garamendi. Mr. Hall. Aye. Mr. Hall votes aye. aye. Mr. Sensenbrenner. Aye. 
Mr. Lamar Smith. Mr. Roy Barker. Mr. Roy Barker votes aye. Mr. Bartlett. Mr. Bartlett votes aye. Mr. Ehlers. Mr. Lucas. Mrs. Biggert. Mr. Aiken. Mr. Nagabauer. Mr. Inglis. Mr. McCall. Mr. Mr. McCall votes no. Mr. Diaz Ballart. Mr. Bill Bray. Mr. Bill Bray votes aye. Mr. Adrian Smith. Mr. Brown. Mr. Olson. Mr. Olson votes aye. Mr. Rothman is not recorded. Mr. Rothman votes no. Mr. Baird is not recorded. Is there anyone that has not uh, had a chance to vote? Uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, you're not recorded. Would you like to be? And so, uh, <laughs> would you like to tell us what that would be? <laughs> Mr. Adrian Smith votes aye. Yes. Is there anyone else that has not been recorded? If if not, please uh, report the vote. Mr. Chairman, I have six members voting aye and 20 members voting no. The uh, ayes have it, the amendment, uh, excuse me, the oh, noes have it, uh, pardon me, the uh, already brainwashed by those folks. The, um, the no's have it, the amendment is not uh, agreed to. The next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentlelady from Maryland. Ms. Edwards, are you ready to proceed with your amendment? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 063, amendment to H.R. 5781 offered by Ms. Edwards of Maryland. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with reading without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentlelady for five minutes to explain her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and also to thank you to Ranking Member Hall, because I think sometimes we hear about how, you know, horrible it is around here and members can't work together across the aisles, and I always think that this uh, committee really displaces that little rumor. Um, and I uh, appreciate what we've tried to do here to, um, to make sure that we cover a lot of different bases and concerns um, with the NASA um, reauthorization. My amendment concerns retaining highly skilled and talented uh, NASA workers for the new NASA future. As you know, in my service on this committee, I've always raised the question about what I believe is the need to retain the internal capacity at NASA so they have the ability to oversee, to manage, um, to direct and influence um, the many talented um, contractors who do so much of the work uh, for the agency. And I believe that sustaining and building upon that talented reserve should be our first priority as we move forward with this authorization. Um, because nothing in this bill can happen really without our skilled workforce. We should recognize that the new authorization is itself a transition. It lays the groundwork for the future, and it's about the expertise and oversight that we could potentially lose. Um, and so what my amendment does is merely extend the current moratorium against reductions in force that's received unanimous, really nearly unanimous, bipartisan support since 2004. 
Uh, this policy was embraced in 2005 and 2008 uh, reauthorization acts controlled by both parties. And given the, given the looming retirement of the shuttle, this language is particularly important for upwards of thousands of NASA employees, um, particularly at jo Johnson Space Center and at Kennedy Space Flight Center, who will be caught up in the transition over the next uh, few years of this new reauthorization. Uh, the language is also important for all NASA employees, however. Um, those who are at Goddard Space Flight Center in the county that's my home uh, would be impacted. And I know that some have suggested that the moratorium keeps workers in jobs that shouldn't exist uh, with a changing mission, but I think it's really to the contrary. The NASA workforce is very uh, fluid and adaptable and is skilled. And um, in this important transition, filling those functions um, the way that the agency needs to uh, will help the agency transition uh, now during this uh, authorization period. Uh, the key point here is that we need internal capacity for technical uh, oversight um, of, of the agency, and I think also the psychological impact already of what we're doing um, in this period has been really tremendous on all of the NASA workforce. In fact, you know, pretty demoralizing sometimes from what I can hear. Everyone feels tar uh, targeted. Uh, so we need to make sure that our workers know that they're supported, um, that we value what they're doing, that they have something important to contribute and continue a policy uh, that we've had for the last several years. Um, and uh, obviously the amendment is endorsed by a number of the representatives of workers um, at all of these NASA facilities. I encourage my colleagues to support the continued moratorium through the, um, this authorization period and to support our workforce. And with that, I would uh, would yield. Mr. Hall is recognized. Mr. Chairman, I reluctantly support the gentlelady's amendment. I don't like to protect only civil service employees while thousands of contractors' jobs are being eliminated. But we do need to do everything we can to ensure our talented workforce remains intact. For that reason, I support the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Let me, first of all, I would agree uh, with Ms. Edwards that we have a very talented NASA workforce, and I would certainly like to see that maintained in full strength and expanded. But let's be realistic here. This is a five-year uh, moratorium on past, uh, on past moratoriums. Um, we simply have to give the agency more flexibility than that. Um, clearly, the, uh, if there is, you know, we're looking at a change direction in, in many ways for NASA. If there is someone in NASA uh, that can do another job, it makes no sense that they're going to fire them and hire somebody else. Of course, NASA is going to move all the employees that they can into these new jobs. I just think that we need to provide more flexibility uh, to the agency. Uh, otherwise, uh, we could have a workforce uh, that then does not allow you to hire new people that have these new skills, or uh, it just is not, in, in my opinion, on top of all the others. Uh, it doesn't give adequate uh, flexibility for NASA. So I would reluctantly have to oppose this amendment. Is there further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. aye. Oppose nay. Nay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, could we do it by, by hand? I'd ask for a recorded vote. We'll do a recorded vote. The clerk will call the vote. I mean, the we'll, 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 we'll call, and I hope the clerk will move along with um, good uh, rhythm because we have just a few minutes. Chairman Gordon. No. Chairman Gordon votes no. Mr. Costello. Ms. Johnson. Ms. Woolsey. Ms. Woolsey votes aye. Mr. Wu. Mr. Baird. Mr. Baird votes no. Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller votes no. Mr. Lipinski. Ms. Giffords. Ms. Giffords votes no. Ms. Edwards. Ms. Edwards votes aye. Ms. Fudge. Ms. Fudge votes aye. Mr. Lujan. Mr. Lujan votes aye. Mr. Tonko. Mr. Tonko votes aye. Mr. Rothman. Mr. Matheson. Mr. Davis. Mr. Chandler. Mr. Carnahan. Mr. Hill. Mr. Hill votes no. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. Mitchell votes aye. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Wilson votes aye. Mrs. Dahlkepper. 
Mrs. Dahlkepper votes no. Mr. Grayson? Aye. Mr. Grayson votes aye. Ms. Cosmas? Aye. Ms. Cosmas votes aye. Mr. Peters? Aye. Mr. Peters votes no. Mr. Garamendi? Mr. Hall? Aye. Mr. Hall votes no. Mr. Sensenbrenner? Mr. Lamar Smith? Mr. Roy Barker? Mr. Roy Barker votes no. Mr. Bartlett. Mr. Bartlett votes no. Mr. Ehlers. Mr. Lucas. Mrs. Biggert. Mrs. Biggert votes no. Mr. Aiken. Mr. Nagabauer. Mr. Inglis. Mr. Inglis votes no. Mr. McCall. No. Mr. McCall votes no. Mr. Diaz Ballart. Mr. Bilbray. No. Mr. Bilbray votes no. Mr. Adrian Smith. M Mr. Adrian Smith votes no. Mr. Brown. Mr. Olson. No. Mr. Olson votes no. Is there, uh, Mr. Matheson? Mr. Matheson votes no. Mr. Wu? Aye. Mr. Wu votes aye. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. We're Matheson, how are you recorded? No. Re the Mr. clerk report? Who, who was after Mr. Matheson? Mr. Wu? Mr. Wu, he votes aye. Did you get Ms. Johnson? No. Ms. Johnson, how would you like to be recorded? <laughs> Is there, oh, Mr. Lipinski? No. Mr. Lipinski's not recorded. Mr. Lipinski votes no. We have two minutes and 44 seconds to the next vote, so the report, the clerk will report the vote. Mr. Chairman, I have 12 members voting aye and 18 members voting no. The uh, no's prevail. The, the amendment is, does not pass. And uh, let me announce that we have two more amendments. Um, and I appreciate three amendments. Oh, we have three amendments. Uh, so we will come back immediately after this vote uh, to finish the bill. Thank you.
the committee will come uh, back to order. Let's see. The next amendment on the roster is an amendment offered by the gentleman from Texas, Mr. McCall, the patient gentleman from Texas, Thank Mr. You. McCall. Thank you, Mr. Are you, Chairman. Are you ready to proceed? I am, and I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 002, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. McCall. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me, uh, I don't think this has been said enough today. Let me commend you and the ranking member and Ms. Giffords and Mr. Olson for a, uh, a uh, fine job, a bipartisan piece of legislation that not only reauthorizes the human space uh, flight program, but saves, restores, and advances uh, human space flight. And I want to thank you personally for that. And uh, with that, uh, my amendment um, basically provides for a sense of the Congress that uh, NASA should attempt to carry out the top recommendations of the decadal survey were possible. Uh, the decadal sur survey puts forth recommendations for NASA research, which is developed uh, by the top scientists in their fields. And in the past years, NASA experienced dramatic funding shortfalls when the budget and appropriations did not adequately fund the agency. The NASA administrator had the authority and exercised his authority to move large funding amounts from the science missions, including the top recommendations of the decadal survey mission areas in order to cover the budget uh, shortfalls in other areas. And as a result, this hurt the progress of the missions and put them behind schedule. At a minimum, NASA should be given priority to planning, designing, funding, and executing the top recommendations from the decadal survey in each mission area. Uh, and while the current amendment language is, in this, is a sense of Congress, I would like to be able to work with the chairman and the ranking member uh, to strengthen this language as the bill uh, moves to the floor. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCall, and thank you for your endurance today. You have a good amendment, and uh, I think the committee should support it. Uh, Mr. Hall is recognized. Common sense amendment, I support it. If there's no further discussion, the vote is on the amendment from the gentleman from Texas. Mr. McCall, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The amendment is passed. The next amendment on the roster is an amendment by Mr. Sensenbrenner and Mr. Miller, a bipartisan amendment, and I think Mr. Miller is going to, going to carry that. Thank you. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment number 041, amendment to H.R. 5781, offered by Mr. Sensenbrenner of Wisconsin and Mr. Miller of North Carolina. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain his amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Simpson Brenner and I disagreed about an uh, amendment earlier today, but this uh, this amendment restores the happy harmony that usually exists yeah. between uh, Mr. Right. Simpson Brenner and me. Um, in our work on the Investigations and Oversight Subcommittee, uh, we have been, Mr. Simpson Brenner and I, have been disappointed in the role of the NASA Council, uh, Office of General Counsel. Uh, what, what I think uh, we want a general counsel to do is advise government agencies to follow both the letter and the spirit of the law. Uh, it appeared in, with respect to two instances uh, that we know of that instead of doing that, the um, general counsel's office or the general counsel determined uh, that what management wanted to do was something other than what the letter and spirit of the law allowed uh, or required. Uh, and in instead of telling them to do, uh, do what the law required, uh, seemed to help them think through a strategy for how to uh, do something different and get away with it. Uh, this amendment requires ethics training for the members of the, the uh, council's office, the licensed attorneys in that office, and it moves the position of ethics officer away from the, uh, from the council. I yield back the balance of my time. Thank you, Mr. Miller, and uh, thank you, and Mr. Sensenbrenner, for bringing us this excellent amendment. Is there further discussion? If no, all in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. The, I think the last amendment is a modified amendment offered by the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Peters. Are you ready to proceed with your amendment? I am, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 5781 offered by Mr. Peters of Michigan. I ask unanimous consent to dispense with the reading. Without objection, so ordered. I recognize the gentleman for five minutes to explain the amendment. 
Uh, I'll be very brief because I explained it uh, beforehand, Mr. Chairman. Uh, basically, this amendment uh, requests that the administrator uh, conduct a, uh, a study on the use of radiation uh, research on non-human primates. It was mentioned in my initial comments. Uh, uh, this is research that has been done for 40 years, and uh, there are now other ways of conducting the same sort of uh, radiation uh, experiments uh, without using non-human uh, primates. Uh, the European Space Agency, for example, no longer uses non-human primates. Uh, the U.S. Air Force has put out a, a fairly detailed report as to why they have moved away from this as well. Uh, this will also, this uh, amendment simply asks NASA to uh, present a report uh, before uh, any additional research. If they have anything that they're doing now, they can continue, but uh, they need to provide justification and rationale for any additional research and would urge adoption. Is there further? Um, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Williams, rec oh, let's see. Let's go to the right first. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Right. Bartlett's recognized. Oh, okay. uh, thank you very much. Uh, I was part of the research team that uh, put the first primates in space. It was more than half a century ago. I was a school physiologist at Pensacola, Florida. We had a, uh, an army monkey and a navy monkey. Their monkey was a rhesus monkey. Ours was a spider monkey, the ones they are anticipating using here. And um, uh, it was a suborbital flight, so I'm not a priori opposed to appropriately using uh, animals. But I rise in strong support of this amendment. I think that the, uh, if they did this research they're talking about, it would be duplicative. And as a scientist, I have some real concern about the validity of this kind of research. Uh, radiation is a stressor, but these animals are already enormously stressed. Uh, these are not the, the affectionate um, uh, spider monkeys that the organ grinder uses, although they are the same spider monkeys. These are monkeys that have forced incarceration, which they keenly resent. And uh, they are enormously stressed. So I don't know how you pretend that you're going to measure the effects of an additional stress radiation when you already have animals that are enormously stressed. And as uh, Mr. Peters mentioned, we've now pretty much moved beyond this. We don't need whole body exposures anymore because we know the target organs. We do a lot of, of uh, tissue culture research. And so I think not only would these experiments be duplicative, they are needless because today we've moved beyond that and we're doing tissue culture studies and, and so forth. Uh, so I rise in strong support of this amendment. I hope that it can be passed. I think it sends the right message. Thank you. Mr. Wu is recognized. I, I do agree that a study is in order. I support the amendment. Mr. Garamendi, would, would you? I yield back the balance of my time. Is there further discussion on the amendment? If not, the vote occurs on the amendment. All in favor say aye. On the modified amendment, all, all, all members say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The ayes have it. The amendment is agreed to. Are there any other amendments? If no, then the vote is on the bill as amended. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. No. The ayes have it. Uh, the, 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 well, let me make sure that I was just saying no as, that was, as an option for someone. I was not uh, voting no. Uh, I was voting aye, so there will be no misunderstanding. I now recognize Mr. Hall for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move the committee favorably report H.R. 5781 as amended to the House with the recommendation that the bill do pass. Furthermore, I move that staff instructed to prepare the legislative report and make necessary technical and conforming changes and that the chairman take all necessary steps to bring the bill before the House for consideration. I yield back. The question is on the motion to report the bill favorably. Those in favor of the motion uh, will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The, uh, the bill is reported favorably. Uh, without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. Members will have two subsequent uh, calendar days in which to submit supplemental, minority, or additional views on the measure. Let me say to Mr. Hall, Mr. Ms. Giffords, uh, Mr. Olson, job well done. Uh, let me particularly say to the staff uh, that has put so much time into this, we, we thank you for that. Uh, I will be the first to say this is not a perfect bill because we did not have the perfect amount of money, uh, but we, we're going to move forward to the uh, to a conference, uh, to the floor, and we welcome additional improvements to the bill as we go along. And again, thank you all, and this uh, hearing is adjourned. Yeah, Ralph. Yeah. Big show, buddy. Going home. I am. Yeah.
Chairman. Lee Lake.